Welcome to the kingdom. Christ. Jesus is Lord in the house, Father God. And so we lift up the name of Jesus in this house where there is power in that name, Father God. We thank you again, Father God, like Sister Kamisha said, that we have an opportunity to lift up the name of Jesus Christ this morning, Lord God. There is no guarantee that we're going to be able to do it tomorrow. So today, Lord God, we praise you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We magnify the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. We have come to praise you, Lord God, because you've been too good to us, Lord God. We refuse to let the rocks cry out in our place this morning. We are the rocks that are crying out this morning, Lord God, because you deserve our praise. You deserve our hallelujah. Satan, we serve you notice this morning. We come against every dry thing in the name of Jesus Christ. We love you, Jesus, and we will not take it back. And so we pray, Father God, that everything will flow decently and in order. In this house this morning, we thank you for the angels that are encamped about around us, Lord God. We pray for the speaker of the hour. Let fire be up on their tongues this morning, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ. But let us grasp the word. Help us to get it, oh God, this morning, Lord God. Help us not to just hear and listen, Lord God, but help us to grasp it, Lord God, and take it with us, oh God, and keep it with us, Lord God. Every day of our lives, Lord God, we need your word, Lord God. 
It is the bread of life, Lord God. Father God, use your two-edged sword and cut everything out that should not be in us and put everything in us that needs to be in us this morning, Lord God. We thank you for signs, wonders, visions, miracles, and dreams in this house this morning, Lord God. We thank you for healing, deliverance, wholeness, and breakthrough in this house this morning, Lord God. And we will give you all the glory, all the praise, Father God, that you deserve in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. If you agree with Deacon Don's prayer, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We honor you, oh God, in this place, oh God. We honor you in this place, oh God. We honor you in this place, oh God. We honor you, oh God. We honor you, oh God. We give you the glory, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're at the time where we read our confession of faith. And it says, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice by choice and be glad in it. We are glad to be in the house of the Lord and in the land of the living. Therefore, we decree, declare, and prophesy where two or three have gathered in his name, he is there as Jehovah Elion, the Most High God, Jehovah Elohim, the God of creation, Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace, Jehovah Shama, the Lord is present. Jehovah Sikkanu, the Lord our righteousness. Jehovah Makadishkum, the Lord our sanctifier. And because Jesus is Lord of this house, we agree that every seat is being filled in every service. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, life, love and unlimited resources for healing, deliverance, wholeness, and breakthrough. The good hand of God's manifest favor is upon us for open doors, opportunities, and this is a prosperous year for us. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a worship winners witnessing, witnessing and the word. We are confident that what he has begun in us, he will perform and perfect until the day of his coming. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you believe that, give him a shout of praise. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 We believe you, oh God. We believe what your word says concerning us, oh God. We believe in the God that heals. We believe in the God that gives us liberty. We believe in the God that set us free. Hallelujah. 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 I can't hear y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This ain't for me. It's for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, oh God. How many of y'all love the Lord? I mean, really love the Lord. Because he's been good. He's been so good to us. We're not deserving of his love, but we're thankful for his love. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This song says, I really love you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
hallelujah. Ooh. 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 I really love you. I really love you. Because you first.
you see that's why I praise you through the good and the bad how many of y'all have had some good and bad times I'll praise you whether happy or sad we get down sometimes I'll
Give God a big hand, praise everybody. Come on, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord. I, I need you to clap like you're grateful. I need you to praise Him like you're grateful. Come on, it could be worse. I know things might be bad, but it could be worse. I know things might be bad, but it could be worse. Yeah! Somebody make a noise! Somebody make a noise in this place! Somebody make a noise in this place. Somebody make a noise in this place. Somebody make a sound of praise. A hard praise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing King. To those of you that's watching this online, love, peace, and blessings to you. Thank you. Can we give our online family and friends a hand praise for joining us? Come on. Come on. Do better. Can we thank God for all of the online family and friends that's joining us? We want to bless God for our visitors that's in the house this morning, Elizabeth. Yvonne, Michael, and Austin, and I may have forgot a couple of more, but let's thank God for all the visitors this morning. Amen. 
Thank you, thank you, Yvonne, Yvonne, Elizabeth, Mike, and Austin. We are honored by your presence this morning. Just a few housekeeping things. Um, just want to encourage the women and remind y'all that this is the last day for you to sign up for our King Daughters Fellowship that's coming up with our beloved co-pastor Michelle Moore. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Amen. Now look around and tell somebody, you look so good this morning. And tell them, I'm glad to see you. Come on, tell them. No, 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 no. Look at, look, look, look. Let's, let, 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 look. No, no, no. Look, look at, everybody look at me. Look at, you got to look at them. Say, no, for real though. Tell them, for real though. <laughs> tell them, I'm glad to see you. Amen. Give God a hand for all of our visitors. Wow. Come on, kingdom. This is what we've been praying about. Amen. We're going to just do something that we normally don't do, but in times like these, I just need some time for us to hear that God is still blessing his people. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have a testimony this morning by one of our very own who's been with us for many years. And with everything going on, I, I, I trust that it will encourage you to to trust him. Deaconess Maxine Johnson. Is she here? Deaconess. All right. All right. Let's receive her as she comes. Amen. Bless you, bless you. Come on, clap. Hold, 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 hold. I got to teach you how to clap all over. It's Pentecostal clap. Come on, clap like this. Because you're going to be testifying next. If you rejoice with her and her testimony, Terry, you might testify next. Carla, you might testify next. Mike, you might testify next. Mia and Austin, y'all might testify next. Grace, Grace, good morning, family. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit of what God has done for the Johnsons. This year makes... 40 years that I've been in the healthcare um, career. I started out in 1982 at Fort Hood. I was a field medic, and then they sent me to San Antonio, and I became a practical nurse, and I've been a practical nurse for 37 years. Um, so this time, about this time last year, I began to seek God about retirement. Um, it wasn't in my plans, but to be real honest, COVID, it just did a, a number on, a, on many people who are in the healthcare field. So I began to seek God, asking for permission to retire. My husband had already said okay. And um, <laughs> I thought he did. <laughs> But, um, I'm gonna go down here and kiss this. I'm gonna go down here and kiss this. In case they start to move some money around. <laughs> but anyway, I, I had had it in my heart to retire. Um, but as you know, when you retire, you, young people, you gotta be ready. You gotta plan ahead. And um, I began to crunch the numbers. Of course, the numbers wasn't, wasn't lining up. And you know, the first thing that the enemy will tell you when the number's not lining up, well, quit tithing. Quit giving all your money to the church. But in the back of my mind, and we've been here for 10 years, and we've heard a lot of good word from our pastor. But the one thing that he has told us over and over again is that if you take care of God's house he'll take care of yours amen so okay I'm crunching these numbers it's not it's not working I'm about seven hundred dollars a month short but I <laughs> right it's, it's real so but I knew what God had told me I knew what God had told me with the and then to add to all the frustration, the economy, the gas prices, the property taxes went up. But 
I remembered what my pastor said. Take care of God's house and he'll take care of yours. So fast forward to this year, we had, um, had still, you know, was going forth with my retirement. I was going to retire March 31st, um, but my, my, I, I'm a home care nurse and my patient became deathly ill. So I heard God say in my spirit, 90 days. So I moved my um, date up, still not knowing how these numbers was going to, going to work out. So one day, my husband came and picked me up from work because my car got, I got hit on the tollway, and that's a whole nother testimony. But my husband had come and picked me up, and I said, babe, how was your Because I had had one of those days. So he reaches back in the back seat, all calm and collective as he always is, and hands me this letter. And I'm thinking, oh no, this is not good news. <laughs> he hands me this letter from his director of nursing. Now granted, remember I told you I was $700 a month short, and that comes up to about $10,000 a year. So my husband hands me this letter, and let me read it to you. It's from his director of nursing. Good afternoon. Commissioner's court met today and unanimous, unanimously passed the proposal to increase the annual salaries of RNs, LVNs, and CNAs by $10,000. Yeah. Yeah. He will do it. He will do it. He will do it. Amen. So I just wanted to stand here today and encourage y'all. First of all, listen to your man of God. He's not trying. He's not trying to get anything from you. He's trying to get something to you. Amen. And I am a living witness that if you take care of God's house, he'll take care of you. I just want to say that the commissioner court in Travis County do not work that fast. We got an email saying that they put that proposal in on Monday, and I think it was Wednesday when they said that they commit that they said good for it. So God has worked in our favor immensely. So like everybody say, thanks the folks at the number one gated community in Travis County should thank me and my God for giving them a raise. <laughs> Come on, there you go. Can you stand? Can you stand and celebrate? Thank you for standing. There you go. That's how you do it. Here's what the promise says, God's son. I can't identify because I'm, I'm follically challenged. But the word says, even to my old age, the Lord will take care of me. You better hear me. Even to my old age, the Lord will take care of me. I went to sleep last night. I, to piggyback on this, I went to sleep last night listening, watching a few things on YouTube about the economy and the collapse and all that. And it's all negative. It's all negative. From our 401ks, our pension plans, how much we're spending now, Brendan, it's all negative. You better learn to live on God's way of doing things. Because listen, out there, it's a whole different ball game. Are y'all listening to me? And I think it was Elder Burner that said, I can't take credit for this. She says, they're raising everything, but God didn't raise the tithe. <laughs> Y'all ain't clapping for that. that, that Y'all ain't even clapping. And it works. You can't beat God given. You take care of his house. Now, everybody looking at pastor because I'm a little weird. Now, see, on the heels of something like that, if I was trying to hustle you spiritually, 
I would have about a 30 minute taking of an offering. And I start prophesying to you. Y'all ain't hearing me. See, 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 I've been doing this alone. My baby girl is here, Jen. My other one is watching. Been doing this a long time. On the heels of that kind of testimony, now it's time to move on y'all emotions and manipulate you. That's the devil's way of doing it. Or I can tell you simply what God says. Bring ye all the tithe and the offering into the storehouse. And when you obey that meal, Gabby, you got to trust me, precious. I put it in my girls. If it's one thing those sisters do, they got a revelation of the tithe. If, this is, if you tithe, I'm telling you. I'm not saying you won't have challenges. But he's promised to take care of you. Elder, elder watch this, Elder. We was having an etiquette class for the ministers on Friday night, and it ended up being a prayer time. And Elder prayed this over y'all. He said, pray, Father, I thank you that the kingdom of God, that our kingdom family, li listen, lives in Goshen. Now, you may not know what Goshen is, but Goshen was the place, watch this, Elder Michelle, that it says when it was dark in Egypt, when God came through Egypt, when it was dark in Egypt, Goshen, where children of Israel live, had their lights on. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again, Gail. And this ain't my message here, but I'm, I'm glad you're here, man. Listen, listen. When it was dark in Egypt, Goshen, where Israel lived, had lights on. Are y'all listening to me? While the hell was destroying their crop and their stock, not one of Israel cattle died. Because they lived in Goshen. Tell somebody, you better live in Goshen. Tell them, that's the place of God. And that'll preach. Now, that'll preach. See? Come, come on, come on, come on. Bernard. That'll preach. So, so don't buy into the narrative, Daniel, that what's happening in the world has to be happening in your house. Unless you are living in the world, Lisa. But if I'm not living in that world, but I'm living on God's economy and his way of doing things. He's from, here's the, here's the, whole, the, the whole truth. He, not that he said you won't, that you won't struggle, that you won't have financial challenges, but somehow, okay, let me leave it alone after this break. <laughs> oh, they got all off. Let me show you how bad our God is. Ah, talk more. And I still got to preach to you a message. Let me show you how bad our God is. Let me show you. So Peter comes up to Jesus one day, Percy and, 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 and Mary, and he says, okay, Lord, they collecting taxes. <laughs> what are we going to do about the taxes? And to show you how concerned Jesus is, not only just about your tithe, which he said you ought to do, he's concerned about your taxes. So he told Peter, go and cast the hook. And the first fish. <laughs> you missed the first part. You missed the first. I say you missed first. And he said, the first fish that you take up is going to have something in his mouth. And then he said it like this. Read your Bible. Then he said, go and pay for me and thee. God is showing us, even when it comes to your taxes, if you trust me, I'll take care of it. Okay, 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 okay. My last one, my last one, Molly, because somebody over here looking at me funny. So God knows in our businesses, we want to prosper. So he uses something of yours before he can give you his. So Jesus is walking by the river one day. And he saw some men fishing. And he called Simon Peter and asked him, Rosalind, can I use your boat? Because if, listen, because until you're willing to give to him, you can't position him to give to you. So he said, Cheryl, let me use your boat, Peter. Watch this. And then he said to Peter, thrust out a little. He said, what? Thrust out what? Thrust out what? Listen, watch this now. And the Bible says they thrust out a little, and then watch this, and then they begin to, uh, he began to preach. After he finished preaching, then he told Peter. Why did he tell him this, Team Ellis, after he finished preaching? Because faith caller come by hearing, 
and hearing by the word. So after he finished preaching, he said, now, Peter, don't lunch out a little. Lunch out into the deep. And then he told him, my brother that's visiting, let down your nets. N-E-T. Watch this, Leslie. Listen, Leslie. Let, listen. let down your mic, your nets. And, the, and Peter said, Lord, we toiled all night and caught nothing, Karen, Irma. Nevertheless, at thy word. <laughs> I wish you had a nevertheless. I wish there was a nevertheless in your spirit. I, I wish you had, nevertheless, at thy word, we will let down, and to show you he wasn't sure of what God was going to do, dang, we'll let down the I told y'all, and from that story, what God wants to do in your life, he wants to affect your net worth. But you're limiting him because you're just letting down the and the net begin to break. But I, I, that, that text is so rich. And then the Bible says, I'm done. Then the nets begin to break. And then the Bible says, and then Peter, Elder Sunithia, beckoned unto his partners. <laughs> because if you support me and what God is doing in this ship, he's going to make sure that what's happening in this ship it's happening in your sh y'all ain't talking up in here, up in here. I can't get no here, up in here, up in here, up in. Do I have to go ghetto and say the roof, the roof, the roof is on fire? Talk more, so I don't care what's happening out there. I'm not saying it don't affect us to a degree. But you got to say to yourself, when they coming on the news and saying, this is going up and that going up, they raising this and they raising that. You just got to say, but I'm a tither. And he's promised. Listen, to open up the windows. The what? Windows. And I, I never known a house that just have windows and no doors. Yes, sir. So if he's opening up windows, doors come automatic I just wish I, I just wish they would receive that though because see, see I'm not gonna play on your emotions even how we receive the offering we do it in a different way now but if you ain't if you don't have the revelation you'll never give nothing and that's why you're gonna struggle but if you're in a place where you believe the word of God because if he did it for Maxine and I'm looking at her. Listen, listen, don't clap. We're getting ready, we're getting ready to transition because I got to teach you this message. If he, he, he did it for Maxine, and a lot of us are there, yes. my AARP people. Yes. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, mm hmm. You know what you're talking about. Look at him and say, mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm hmm. <laughs> God's son, just thank God you ain't there yet, baby. Just thank God. God. Jen, girlfriend, you better do a twist right now but that you ain't there because right now they messing with our everything that's why he said even to my old age the Lord will take care of me anybody believe that come on give God a hand praise all right all right Stan let me just still give you this word let me give you this word I have to give it because in conversations this week they didn't tell me to preach this but they only confirmed it I didn't say anything to them when they was talking to me but I've talked to several people and in conversations this week I say God thank you for confirming what I need to preach if you can stand not in reference to the preacher but in reference to God and his word so father we thank you that as we gather this morning thank you for what you are doing for Team Johnson and Deaconess Maxine. And you are no respect of persons. If you're doing it for them, you'll do it for us. And I pray, I just, yes, Lord, and I pray for all those that, quote, in the natural or nearing retirement age. And it seems like in the natural that all of the things that they provided is being messed with, Father God, but Father, 
even if they get to the point to where they say, I don't know what else to do. May they keep their eyes upon you where the psalmist says, I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. And he reminds us that I have been young and now I'm old. But never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. So reassure all of us that are older that you're going to take care of us like you're doing for the Johnsons. In Jesus' name. Now bless our time around the word. Say something to all of us that we need to hear. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 2, the New Living Translation. I will be reading from verse 1. Verse 1 through 10. Now, we're a little bit into the hour, and I normally try to get you out by 1230, so I'm going to try to shoot for that, but if not, give me some grace, okay? Is that all right? You know what? Because God also kind of been rebuking me in my heart and say, see, you got to make sure that you just try not to rush to get them out to impress them to come back. You better make sure you're saying everything I tell you to say. Because cause, cause, cause this is the thought, because they don't have no problem when they watch that TV for several hours. Or they watched that, they, they, they didn't win watch that new uh, Jurassic Park movie and they wouldn't bother that it was way over now. I ain't going to say who watched Jurassic Park already. <laughs> Let me quit being a hypocrite because I'm on my way to watch it too. But anyway, all righty Exodus chapter 2 verse 1 through 10 and it reads, New Living Translation. About this time, a man and a woman from the tribe of Levi got married. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. When she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket. Say she put the baby in the basket. Look at somebody and say, Pastor, want to talk about? Are you a basket case? I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm sorry. That was a bad joke. <laughs> if you can see your face right now, El, El design. I told y'all I'm still being saved. Are y'all praying for me? I'm trying to get saved. We got half saved deacons and half saved preachers in this church. All right. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. The baby's sister stood at a distance, watching to see what would happen to him. Soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river, and her attendants walked along the riverbank. When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby's sister approached the princess. Shall I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the child, the baby for you, she asked. Yes, do, the princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. <laughs> Take this baby and nurse him for me, the princess told the baby's mother. I will pay you for your help. Oh, that's preaching. And the mama said, I'm going to let you pay me. And all the mother said... So the woman took her baby home <laughs> and nursed him. Later, when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her own son. The princess named him Moses, for she explained, I lifted him out of the water. The word of the Lord is blessed. May he grant us understanding. And everyone said amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing king. Fist bump your, your brother and sister to the left and right. Says about all about him, and I'm preparing to meet him. Thank you, Sister Denise, Brother Swift. Thank y'all. Let's give God a hand for our musicians. Amen. <laughs> Minister Vincent and BYV. Come on, give God a hand for. Amen. Thank y'all for y'all service to the king and the kingdom. Amen. This morning, I, I, I'm continuing the series focused on the family, but a subtitle this morning, Essential Team, is Releasing Our Children into God's Hands. Releasing our children into God's hands. What am I teaching this morning? Releasing our children into God's hands. 
Okay, now that's how they would say it in the New Lutheran Church. We got a little bit more spirit about us. Okay, that's how they would say it in the Lutheran Church. All sick, dignified, and educated. Okay, what are we teaching this morning? Come on, one more time. Got to get Pentecostal with it. Come on, what am I teaching? All right, we say it with an attitude in this church. Amen. Can I say to us that one of the hardest things for us as parents is to release our children? And importantly, to release them into God's hands. We're going to look at this text this morning. And in this text, Elder Washington, I believe that God's going to teach us how to trust him with our children's lives and their future. Because one of the things we got to embrace, Leslie, I can always tell, already tell you with me, we're in the right service this morning. You can always see, 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 I, I could have just said, go home. No, no, no. I got to talk to us because it's crazy right now, even with the children. Yes, sir. Yeah. But we must understand that as our children grow and develop, listen now, saints, we got to grow and develop with them. Amen. And we got to get to a place where we're going to see this morning where you just got to release them. Amen? Amen. Let me just give you two different authors' opinions on the stages of raising children. There's two different authors, so just bear with me. You know, I just like to research and read. That's what I do. Monica Swanson writes of Christian parenting. She says there's four steps to a healthy relationship with your children. First, there's the bonding. There's the what? Bonding. Through time invested is what she says. First, there's the bonding through time invested. Then next, she says there's a building. Through a relationship of trust. First there's the bonding. Then there's the building. Bonding through the time invested. Building through a relationship of trust. Developing <coughs> through a mentorship relationship. Developing is number three. But then she said there is a time of release. Somebody say release. release. Now Bob Hosteller, who wrote, who wrote for Focus on the Family. That's Dr. James Dobson's organization. Wrote this article concerning parenting. He says, phase one, in the different stages, you are the commander. <laughs> he says, you're dictating, telling the child who to listen to, what to eat, when to go to bed, and how to perform a task. Amen. That's early on. You're the commander. Amen. But how many of you know it don't take them lo take it long for them to look at you and say, you ain't commander no more? Yeah. Okay, amen. amen. So he said, first of all, there's, you are their commander. Then he said, you are their coach. Coaching them along in life. I'm going to hurry up. Then listen, then he says you are their counselor. So you go from being their commander, there's two different authors, to their coach, to their commander. And he said when you are their counselor, listen, this is rich. This is rich. Faith. He says too many of us continue to parent our teenagers in much the same way we parented them as toddlers or grade schoolers. I'm going to say that again. He said too many of us continue to parent our teenagers in much the same way we parented them as toddlers or grade schoolers. And it don't work. <laughs> Lastly, he said, there is the consultant. Lastly, in his fourth stage, he said, there is the consultant. He says, each phase has its own challenges. He said, but phase four can be the most difficult because it requires letting go. It requires what? And let me just help some parents real quick because, listen, sometimes you got to understand those kids are at an age where you got to let them go. Yeah. And whatever they're facing, it's on them. Watch this now. I'm, no, no, no. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show it to you. See, because some of us, our children can become enabled. We, we are children enablers. You don't need a 40-year-old man still depending on his mama. You 40, I went to, I, I went to the extreme. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could, oh, yeah, Elder Vernon said no. Yeah, you got some 40-year-old. Okay, but, but, okay, let's stay here. Let's stay nice, stay nice, stay nice. Because stay nice. you ladies always pipe up when I get to talk about the brothers. But when I talk about them sisters, y'all be quiet as a church mouse. I talk about the brothers and it's, hey, amen, stay right there. You're talking now, Pastor. Are oh, you preaching now, Pastor? I get to talk about sisters need to know how to cook before they get married as silence as the lamb. 
I'd brother better learn how to microwave them meals. <laughs> I see y'all little looking there. See y'all behind the masses now. I see you. Pickaboo, I see you. But let me show you, we got to get to a place to where, watch this, it comes a time where you got to say, they old enough now to make their own decisions. Go with me to John chapter 9. Let me show you something real quick. Let me go, go to John chapter 9, the New Living Translation. Because we got to get to that place where we release our children. And some of you, under the sound of my voice, you are heavy, you're discouraged, you're depressed. And the main thing is, I told you, if Satan cannot get to us, he will work overtime to get to us through our children. Please, please, please hear that. When Israel was coming out of Egypt, the devil, Pharaoh, wanted their children. Watch this. John chapter 9, the New Living Translation. I'm going to read verses 18 through 21. And I want you to see it comes to a point, a point where we have to say they are old enough. It's on them now. John 9, verse 18. John 9, verse 18. Are you there? Watch this. 9, verse, verse uh, 18, it says this. Now, my, my new living is a little bit... Well, I'll read that one. It says, The Jewish leader still refused to believe the man had been blind and could now see. So they called this... Don't, don't go too ahead of me real quick. So they called in his what? Stay, stay, keep that up right there. So listen. So what we're dealing with right here is this blind man that Jesus healed, and he's being questioned by the Pharisees and society, how did he get healed? And there's a debate going forward. So the Jewish leaders still refused to believe the man had been, had been blind and could not see. So they called in his what? Parents. They called in his what? Parents. Read. Go, go on now, sis. Go on now, please. They asked him, is this your son? <laughs> is this your son? Now they called in who? Parents. Who did they call in? Parents. And they said, is this your son? Was he born blind? If so, how can he now see? Now, now stay with me. Watch this next answer. Watch this next answer. Next answer. Go to next question first. His parents replied, we know this is our son. Stop, stop, stop. Because whether we like it or not, I don't care what they do, Elizabeth, we still can't deny him. I just said something right there. Personally, I said something right there. Yep. That's still yours. Yeah, yeah. Listen, look at me, because don't turn hypocritical. They were just like you was happy when they got their little honor roll and y'all was taking a picture. <laughs> it ain't no honor roll right now. It's some dishonor stuff going on. <laughs> ain't nobody talking. Ain't nobody. Oh, you, my baby. And we came to your house and said, let me show you who my baby won this week. Oh. You know how I know? Because I'm one. <laughs> When my baby girl uh, medaled at the Junior Olympics and she gave me the medal, I showed everybody that medal. I wanted to ro ro wear it around my neck like a uh, biggie, I, like I was a little biggie. <laughs> Look at my daughter. My daughter's a Junior Olympian. Frederica Nadine, she made that Junior Olympian. Are y'all listening to me? So when we happen in that, watch this now, Shirley. His parents replied, we know this is our son and that he was born blind. Watch this. Go ahead, sis. But we don't know how he can see or who healed him. Ask him. What's the answer? He's old enough? Can we go home now? We can go home now. We can go home. We're going to go home now, Carla. Because some of y'all need to learn that sentence right there. They're old enough. It gets to a point where you got to say, they're old enough. When somebody brings you something about your child, she old enough. Speak for herself. To speak for, y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. Because that's why you frustrated and still peed off to the nth degree. And sometimes, listen, what they facing, it ain't always that the other party is wrong. Okay. See, we got to, somebody got to say the truth, man. Because sometimes, not my little Johnny, he wouldn't cut up like that in class. He don't listen to you. Have I got a witness? Can I, 
Can I get an amen or a woo-woo or something in this house? Can I get a woo-woo? Hey, because y'all ain't amen in the brother. Y'all don't want to amen the preacher. Yeah, your little Johnny. When we go to school, oh, no, my child ain't cutting up. I don't care if you did anoint his uh, he- her forehead with oil and it's shining still. They wiped that oil off and put a bandana on. Que pasa nada? Okay, watch this. But look, 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 look what the mother said. Verse 20 again. The parents said verse 20. Verse 20. Listen, his parents replied, we know this is our son and he was born blind. Watch this. Go ahead, sis. But we don't know how he can see or who healed him. Ask him. He's old enough to speak for himself. If you came here for nothing else, whether it's online or in person, that's somebody's word. God is telling you, you got to get to the place where you say, when when somebody brings you something about your children, you got to say, you got to say to them, they're old enough to speak for themselves. Can I get an amen in here? Listen, and you got to get... You got to get to that place. You, ha- you and I have to get to that place. Are y'all with me? So let's learn four things that we observe and learn from Moses' family on parenting and releasing our children into God's hand. What are four things, Mia, that we observe and learn from Moses' family on parenting and releasing our children into God's hands? I repeat things here because I'm a teacher. There are four things we observe and learn from Moses' family on parenting and releasing our children into God's hands. Are we back? Let's go back to Exodus chapter 2 now. Go back to Exodus chapter 2. First thing I think that is important that we learn from Moses' family on parenting is that, listen, it is important that we see slash discern the potential and purpose in our children. It is important that we see or discern the potential and purpose in our children. Look at Exodus chapter uh, 2, Exodus chapter 2, and verse number 2. It says this, the woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw, listen now, she saw that he was a what? She saw that he was a what? When she saw that he was a special baby. God's son, Jennifer, it is said of the Jewish mothers, It is said of the Jewish mothers from the time the baby is cradled in their arms that they begin to whisper in the baby's ears, Jehovah is God. Jehovah is God. It is said of Jewish mothers from the time, I'm going somewhere, from the time that that baby is born, Elder Barbara and the mother's holding, they begin to whisper, Gabby, in that baby's ears, Sister Irma, Jehovah is is God. Jehovah is God. Listen now. What if we, from the time our children and grandchildren are born, begin to whisper in their ears, Jesus is Lord. And he loves you. And he got a plan for you. Jesus is Lord. And he loves you. And he got a plan. I wish I had somebody that would believe that. From the time they are born. She's Mimi. I'm Papa Mo. And when Amani is running around the house and it looked like a World War III disaster area because all the toys are all over the place. And if you're not careful, you're going to fall and hurt. I ain't nobody talking to me. I didn't walk through that house and stumble now so much, so many times. I'd be like, OK, Amani is here. <laughs> we pulled up this morning. I'm back in Mimi's car and, I, and Amani's uh, car seat is there, right? And then I look at the window from the inside, right? And it's slob all open. <laughs> I open the door, right? Uh, no, I'm not making this up, Mike. Justin, I open the door, right, to get my bag out the back. And way underneath the, the seat is some cookies. <laughs> Jesus just loves you. And Papa Mo gonna be patient with his baby girl. Cause you gonna clean up this car. No, I'm just joking. (laughs) 
but it's important. Watch this, watch this, beloved. Why do I believe when I say it's important that we see and discern the potential and purpose in our children? Why? Because it's what you say over them that matters more than what others will say. Yeah. Hear me, hear me, hear me now. Just think, in case you think I'm saying something cute, watch this. See, they say the Jewish women would say from the time they're born, Jehovah is God. Jehovah is God. And one of the things that the Jewish community was big on, that they would name their children certain names that would project what they believe their future would be. Are y'all listening to me? So watch this. So why don't we develop saying something to our children when they're young? Now, I know we can do that, and it seems like when they get old, they go far away from it. But I'm going to help you with that even this morning. But why don't you start by just discerning their potential? Listen, they're discerning their purpose. Because listen, okay, so you, think I'm, so you don't just think I'm rambling. When, before Samson was born, the angel came to his mother and told her she would have a son. You never know Samson's mother's name. So then Samson's mother went and told her husband. Manoah was his name. Manoah came back, Minister Vincent, I'm going somewhere, and said to God, send us the angel again. Listen. And then tell us how we should order the child. (laughs) That's in your Bible. Since you got this divine purpose, help us to get in on what you're doing with them and help us to order the child. Oh, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Come here, Elizabeth and Zacharias. That's John the Baptist's parents. Zacharias in there performing his priestly duties. And listen, Elder Michelle, he wasn't doing nothing deep. The brother was just burning incense. For those of you that don't like incense. Hint, hint. But anyway, he's burning incense, right? And the angel shows up to him, tell him that his wife's going to have a baby. They have a baby. Then begin to tell him what the child's going to be like. Listen! Tell him what the child's going to be like. He got to asking all these questions, elders. And because he got to asking all these questions and God can hear doubt, God shut his mouth. Why? Because, boy, you about to mess up his future before he even come. Y'all ain't hear me. You about to mess up his future before he even, team burns, before he, he, Molly, God shut Zachariah's mouth. Because I'm trying to tell you I'm going to give you a boy. First of all, you owe, she owe, it's already reproach upon your wife that she didn't give you any kids. So I'm going to lift her reproach by giving her a kid. Are y'all listening to me? So that barrenness, scarlet letter will be lifted from her. I'm trying to tell you she's going to have a boy. He's going to be a powerful man. And you asking me all these questions just because you owe. I don't care if you owe. I know who you are. I know what I can do through you regardless of how old you are. Somebody say amen. I don't care how old you are, Zach. You didn't think I know how old you are when I came to you? But Zach kept going back and forth. So Rosin, so he put his mouth shut. Don't, don't miss it. See, y'all think I'm just, I'm coming up with something cute. Read your Bible, please. So when John the Baptist, I'm sorry, after he made him shut up, Austin, he couldn't speak. And when he came out the temple, the Bible says the people perceived that he had had an encounter with God. Now watch this team, Billy. Watch this team, Billy. So Elizabeth gets pregnant, has John the Baptist. When was he able to open his mouth again? After the boy was born. And then when he opened his mouth that time, T- Vincent, he said the right things. He began to prophesy. Boy, you're going to be bad. You're going to be gone before Jesus and you're going to shake this nation. Why? God had to shut his mouth because until you and I see and discern what God is going to do in our children, don't let them labor them. You prophesy over them. You say over your children what they're going to be. Come on, y'all. Come on, man. Receive that. Receive that. It's what you say to and about your children. Even, I get it, even when you got to say it by faith. Even when you got to say it by faith. Are y'all listening to me? Because he had to shut up Zachariah's mouth because Deacon Bo, God said, if I shut, if I don't shut you up, you're going to talk yourself out of what I'm trying to do with you and Elizabeth. And you about to mess up the boy's future. Oh, that's a good word right there, man. That's a good. And listen, and I'm not just 
preacher that denies reality. Yeah, sometimes them kids get on your last nerve, your last reserve nerve. You done got on my doggone nerve, and you don't want to say doggone. And all the honest people say it? I'm going to turn my back so you can be honest. And all the honest people say it? All right, there you go. You can be free. You can be free. Don't, don't, because you're safe. For, you didn't got on my. <laughs> Mama, didn't you go to church today? Yeah, you bought me there. <laughs> and all the honest people said, yeah. don't you just sit all holy? Don't look no holy. Don't look so. And I ain't endorsing it, but come on, them kids will take you there. Oh, come on. Oh, Jesus, y'all so safe. I know not y'all. It's all hallelujahs in your house. Praise the Lord. God is good. Nobody raises their voice. Nothing goes. Nobody slams the door. Okay, I see a few of y'all identifying with me. Thank you for the real few. Yeah, this group over here, I don't know. But listen, it was both Samson's parents, John the Baptist's parents. Watch this. And when it came to Mary and Jesus, she had so much in her heart that the Bible says, and Mary just kept all these things to herself because she knew God had given her something. She says, and Mary pondered these things in her heart. Ah, you just got to say, God, I just believe that. Listen, even though they old. Okay, okay, okay. Let me help us. Let me throw a deaconess corner to see you, precious, so I can help us for, with the older kids. See, Samson is a picture of that child that wouldn't listen. Anybody know about Samson? Yeah. Fee, five, four, from. I'm Samson. But he had a girl problem. Ain't nobody talking. You make a long story short. After Delilah didn't give him a new haircut, <laughs> and they've taken his eyes out because the thing that Satan wants your children to lose is their vision. <laughs> <laughs> to show you how good God is, on the, his last act, which is recorded in the scriptures, he killed more Philistines in that moment. But here's what you got to get. It's in the Hall of Fame, Hebrews 11. That Samson, despite you and I may think that he's a failure, God recorded him. And Sam, Samson is in Hebrews 11 where all the Hall of Faith people are. And he's recorded. Not, not, see, see, God, listen, this is what I love about God. Because God don't remember us for the mistakes we made. He remembers Samson for how he went out. He went out right with God. He says, Lord, one more time. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. But give me one more. Are y'all hear me? One more time. And that prayer got him in the hall of faith. So even though our children may be acting as stupid as hell, God can still do what he wants to do with them. Are y'all listening to me? Come on, give God a hand right there. Amen. So listen. But it's important that we discern and see the, p the potential and purpose in our children. The second thing I want you to see when it comes that we, that we learn from uh, Samson and his family is this. Okay, let, let, let me give you this because I told you it's going to go this. Now, now here's what I got to help us with because I know sometime before things get better with our children, sometimes they look like they're getting worse. And we're praying and fasting. Am I right about it? Let me give you something in the Bible. Go to Mark chapter 9 real quick. Go to Mark chapter 9. Now, this is, for, this is for that praying parent. And it looks like the more you pray for that child, the worse things get. Are y'all listening to me? Watch this. Mark chapter 9, verse 14 through 29, the New Living Translation. Mark 9, verse 14 through 29. I want you to see something here. Are you getting anything? Amen. See? We're going to look at somebody, watch this, we're going to look at somebody who had a son. And, and this is kind of like an illustration of, listen, because I, 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 I know sometimes people be saying, Pastor, it seems like the more I pray, Karen, the worse they get. Watch this. Mark chapter 9, verse 14, New Living Translation. Are you there? Watch, watch what it says, verse 14. 
Now, my new living might be a little bit dated because there's a few of them. So if the words are different, bear with me. It said, verse 14 says, when they returned to the other disciples, they saw a, lo- a large crowd surrounding them. And some teachers of religious law were arguing with them. Are you with me? Yes. When the crowd saw Jesus. When the crowd what? Saw when the crowd what? Saw when the crowd saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with awe. And they ran to meet him. Watch this. Stay with me. What is all this arguing about? Jesus asked. Watch this. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I bought my son so you could heal him. He's possessed with a what? Evil Evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever this spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Now, Matthew of this same story, Elder Washington says this. He says, for he often falls into the fire and into the water. And sometimes our children tend to go from one heated situation to one that's drowning them. Matthew of the same verse, Elder Barber says, he, listen, says he often falls. Matthew 17, 15, he often falls into the fire or into the water. Seems like he, our children can go from one heated situation to one situation that's drowning them and trying to drown us. Are y'all with me? Look at, go back to verse number uh, Verse number 17 again. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teach, I bought my son to your, I bought my son so you can heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit. And you got to understand that sometimes, yep, the devil uses our little Johnny. I ain't going to rush past that. You, you, you think they're a little angel. They're a fallen angel. Not my little angel. Your angel is a fallen angel. Amen, Pastor Mo. They so sweet. Oh, listen, listen, let me help us. It's in them. My brother, yeah. let's visit. It's in them. Yeah. They this young, yeah. right? They this, they this small, right? Yeah. You be correcting them, and what some of them have the nerve to do? Yeah. And mom and daddy sometimes, mom and daddy think it's cute. Not Papa Mo. <laughs> I love me some Amani Nadine Taylor. But I'm the enforcer. When I say no, I mean no. And don't you dare raise your hand at me. Hey, look, 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 look. First one, I don't mean it. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna throw you under the bus, baby girl. But I remember when I had you and your mama used to be working at that post office and we was together. And so I can remember when we had, I'm going old school now, when I had my turntable and my albums. And my Morantz and my Kenwood. My, my, anybody know those? Yeah. All right, all right. So I can remember when, 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 when I bought in or when she was a baby, and I can tell when she was developing, because when, when Jen first would fall down, she'd fall down like timber. <laughs> right? Right? So then I put her down one time, Deacon Eddie Molly, and I set her down, and she stood there, and she's about to fall, the time, and she, the time, and she did this. She fell back on her butt. She didn't fall on, over on her head. I say, oh, so you're learning what pain is. So when she would go by daddy's turntable, I tell her no. And she'd be looking at you now. <laughs> right, 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 right. So I, I know where she at now, Elder Barbara. So she still would do this. And, look, and I didn't always wait till she touched it. But this is what I did. I would pluck them. No. <clears throat> few times of that? <laughs> Smile. <laughs> Are y'all listening? Because look, because again, if you don't hear them cry now, I don't whip mine because I can't stand to hear them cry. Okay. Okay. Watch this. It ain't going to, the Bible says the rod of correction will not kill them. Are y'all listening? I know it's old school. I know it's old school. Now, I ain't promoting our old school because it was, it was borderline abuse. Okay, okay, let's do a survey. Where my extension card babies at? 
Okay, extension cup, right, right, right. What, what are those with the big sticks, the big paddles? And the, uh, a, a, amen, amen. Now, ain't nobody, ain't nobody talk. Now, the torture, Gabby, the torture was you made me go get my own switch. I'm tortured while I'm out there trying to pick one day, and then when I bring it in, my mama had the nerve to say, you got to be kidding me. You're going to go get a bigger one. So I'm going to get a big switch that you're going to beat me up with. The devil is a lie. I'm out of here. <laughs> and all the other people said, yeah. come on, line, all y'all said. Yeah. <laughs> but look, but look, Deaconess Maxine, look how we turned out. Look how we turned out. Let's thank God for my, look, let's thank God for mama and them. <laughs> my, everybody say mama and them. Let's thank God for mom and them. And see, see, see they get away now, Esther, because watch this, back in the day, if you messed up in the neighborhood, anybody remember this kind of whooping? It, they didn't wait till you got home. They would whoop you, and then when you got home and told mama, thinking mama gonna be mad at them, mama whoop you again. Somebody say mom and them. It ain't good, Grandma. Don't y'all dare email me. I'm referring to our mothers back in their generation. It takes the village. Okay, listen. Here's the point. Thank you, babe. I'm at 34 minutes. Listen, listen, listen. Yeah, you did. For some of us, it's okay. Not, not those that just watched Jurassic Park. They watched the whole movie and didn't. They, they, Diane, they didn't move. Diane, they didn't move. They didn't go to the bathroom. They didn't talk, they didn't nod, like some of them doing on me, did mom. Oh, oh, mom and them. <laughs> Let me finish. Let me finish. Oh, it's real talk. I ain't got time. Yeah, I don't play church. I don't do the church thing, the little religious thing. I don't do it. I just don't do it. But, but listen, here's what I want you to see in this text. Okay, let me go back to it because I want to rush through it, but I'm not. Verse 18, I just won't finish it. That's all it is. I'm not going to finish this today. Notice verse 18 again. It says, verse 18 of Mark 9, essential team, verse 18. It says, whenever this spirit sees them, it throws them violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I, listen, here's what I want us to read, babe. So I ask your disciples. So I ask your what? Disciples. Stop. Now I want to put a charge to the kingdom family, Elaine and Archie. If people, children need deliverance, can they come in here and find people that believe that they can be delivered? Because watch this. Because watch this now. Because watch this. We talk a good game. We talk a good game. We talk, and I'm saying from the poor pit, starting with Pastor Mo, on down. Because people have children that need deliverance. And they, and they at the end of the rope. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Now notice this. He says, he says, so I asked, verse 18, latter part, so I asked your disciples to cast them out. Where did I stop at before? I didn't stop there. Yeah, yeah. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. And Vanessa, it's not that they couldn't do it, because he had already equipped them. A lot of you got authority from Christ that you ain't even using. You got, you got power from God that you ain't even using. You, you're like a battery. And listen, and because you're like a battery that's not in use, when we do try to put you in use, you've been drained. A lot of saints are like batteries that's not being used. And then when we need you, we go to you, pull on you, and there's nothing. And I, I, don't know, I don't mean to be negative. That's just the truth. See, because when you really realize the kind of relationship that you have with God, you won't always need to contact your pastor because you got power. You got, are y'all listening to me? Ain't nobody talking. You won't need to call Reverend so-and-so to shine his shoe, preach you with the slick hair, and send in $500. I can save you $500. Just tithe and just come let one of the ministers pray for you. Amen, Pastor Mo. Look what it says. 
Look what it says. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Father, may the kingdom never be a place where people come and they can't get help. May the kingdom of God, Christian center families, never be homes where people can come and not get help. That when people knock on our door and say, can you pray for me? Because I've been here and I've been there and I've been all over the place. May we have the confidence to say in Jesus' name, you just knocked on the last door. You're going to get some help today. Come on, give God a hand praise if you believe that. Watch this. Watch this. It says, so I took disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't. Verse 19, Jesus said to them, you faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I? See, see, I'll make him nice. Gail, he's being hard right here. He said, how long am I going to put up with y'all? You've been with me all this time. The man's son has a situation. Y'all, I didn't, I didn't deputize you with my authority. He brings you a situation, and you don't do nothing. About, ain't nobody talking. How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So, yeah, you can hear frustration, in, and I don't want God frustrated with me, Bernard. I don't want God to be frustrated with me. You, what, why you didn't pray for him? Why you didn't pray for him? Yeah, we got to call pastor. No, why you didn't pray? We, we got to call one of the other. Why, no, why you didn't pray? Too much of this codependency on the preacher and certain celebrity names to get your breakthrough. Jesus said, because you believe in me, you can ask the Father whatever you will and he will do it. For, ain't nobody talking. Jesus said to you, because you believe in me, Jesus, believe in Jesus, you can ask the Father. Okay, he said it like this. And in that day, you shall not ask me nothing. But whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it you because you believe I came from him. That's in your Bible. You ain't got to go to some preacher, give some hefty offering. They play in you. Talk more. You got access to God yourself. You bring that grandbaby before God yourself. You bring that child before God yourself. You bring that unsaved boss before God yourself. Verse 19, Jesus said to them, you faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they bought the boy. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into what? See, don't miss it. This, this is rich. This is rich. I tell you, this is rich. Oh, I might let y'all go home after this. Not, listen, 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 this is rich. Bring the boy to me. Watch this now. And it says, watch this. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, <laughs> and, 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 and the evil spirit, your sinners, see when you bring in your children to Jesus too. But notice, here's what we get thrown off at. Annas, here's what we get thrown off at. And when the evil spirit, Yvonne, saw them bringing it to Jesus, you think he just going to give up your child without a fight? Amen. Notice, beloved, he calls the child to go into one more fit. You bother because you're praying, and it looked like instead of things getting better, it's getting worse. Can I tell you that this devil is acting up because he knows Jesus is about to get rid of that? Ain't nobody, listen, listen, you missed it. You missed it. No, no, you ain't, you ain't get it. Can I tell you that the reason why sometimes it looks like it's getting worse with your child is only because, listen, that's the devil way to, of letting you and I know that God has told him to pack his bags and move. And, and nobody likes to be evicted, so he knows he's about to be evicted. So he's causing all that. He's going to take your child through one more time. He's going to take him through Deacon Walker one more time because I know I got to go now. The master of masters is here. I got to go now. So let me throw a hissy fit one more time. Because I know I got to go now, Gabby. 
But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, see, he saw Jesus. It threw the child into a violent convulsion, and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening, Jesus asked the father. He replied, since he was a little boy, and it don't matter how long it's been. When you're bringing them to Jesus. Watch this. He says the spirit often throws him in the fire into water, trying to kill him. Trying to what? Kill him. Trying to what? You better hear that. Satan is trying to do what to our kids? Kill he, trying to kill him. What verse did I stop at? I always lose my place. 22. 22. Watch this. What do you mean? Uh, I'm sorry. The spirit often throws him into the fire and into the water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. <laughs> oh, I know why you asked saying that. Because don't miss it. Karen, don't miss it. If you, I know why you're saying that. Because you just met those who are supposed to represent me. And a lot of people are doubting your God because they see you doubting your God. I, I, I'm, I'm done right here. I ain't, I, I'm not done with the message. but I'm just, see, see, the reason why he said that, Kamisha, is if you can do anything. Wait, what? Did I, did, did I miss something? Because those who are supposed to carry your name and say they represent you, say they've been up on the mountaintop and we saw you transfigured. Ain't nobody talking. So you multiplied the fishes and the loaves. So you healed the nobleman's son, the woman with the issue of blood, raised Jairus' daughter, and yet somebody bring you their situation with their child and you can't help them? How long you been walking with me? Didn't you see me do this in your life? Didn't you see me do that in your life? Didn't you see me do that? And that? Oh, now see, it's because of the way that you're acting. They don't even believe in me. Oh, God. What do you mean if I can? Verse 23, Jesus asks, anything is possible if a person believes. Now, I'll be honest with you. This next, this next verse, Gabby and, and Deacon Eddie, is one of my prayers, Molly. Mia? Austin, this is one of this preacher's prayers. The father instantly cried out, Father, I do believe, but help me. Help me overcome my... And how do I know? I'm not going to finish. And how do I know if it's unbelief? Just see what you're saying to God now. First of all, you started saying to God about his disciples. Then you started talking to God about you not sure what he can do. So whenever you come to God now, it's not faith or trust. You just come to me with a whole bunch of complaining, worrying, and unbelief. And I can't move as long as you in unbelief. The Bible says he went to his hometown and he could there do no mighty works because of their unbelief. The mighty work that you say should be happening in your life is not happening. And it's not because some of you are in sin. You're in unbelief. Oh, but I got the answer for you right here. The father cried out and said, Lord, I believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Say that with me. Lord, help me overcome my unbelief. Now, listen, the, 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 whatever what went on to happen is, you know, Jesus set the, the, the guy free, set this uh, man's son free. But I read this for those parents that you've been praying for those children and it seemed like instead of things getting better, Deacon Don, Ian, they're getting worse. I'm telling you, don't stop trusting Jesus. Are y'all listening to me? Are you listening to me? Listen. Listen. I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. Again, hear, hear me. A lot of us, if we really think about our own life, we are answers to some parents' prayers. And we look like we would never come to the place where we are now. But as the old folk used to say, Sister Mary in the church, somebody pray for me. Had me on their mind and took the time to pray for me. Then what does it say, preacher? And I'm so glad they prayed, Carla. I'm so glad. They so don't you stop praying because, listen, you bring it into Jesus. 
But the, what you're seeing now just could be Satan throwing his last fit before he have to come out. Because this was, this was Satan's last fit before, because you got to come out. You got to come out. You got to come out. Are y'all listening to me? So I want to say to us parents again, don't you be moved just because sometimes, and those of you watching, things look like they're getting worse instead of better, and you are pray praying and fasting for your child. Walk by faith, not by sight, even though it looks like they're getting worse. I'm saying to us, Satan is throwing his last fit before he has to let them go. Satan is throwing his last fit. I know you even brought him to some people before, and they pray, and they couldn't help him. But I'm saying today, based on this moment, based on this word, this, yeah, there you go. See, if you got that situation, you got to be saying like Mary now, Father, be it unto me. According. See, if you're sitting here, if you're watching, here's what I would say. If I was in that situation, and I got a child that's acting as hell as don't look like nothing I ever prayed about. If I'm hearing the man of God release that, I'm saying, God, be it unto me according to your word. Whether it's a grandchild, a child, a great-grandchild, because it's not the will of God that our seeds perish. You don't know these people, so I'm not betraying anybody confidentiality. But I've in these 26, going on 27 years of pastoring this church, I've had the privilege to see generations of children come through our church. And Jen, I want to cry. Make me want to cry now. That a baby that I once knew I was in this church is being pimped out in South Austin. Oh, my God, being pimped out in South Austin right now. A baby who used to be in this church from drugs to prostitution to pimped out broke, broke my heart until I remembered Bathsheba, not Bathsheba, Rahab. So I said, okay, God, let this be a, from Minister T Tamalia's ministry, let this be a Rahab rescue. Go to, South, go to South Austin. Listen, listen. I'm keeping it real. Go to South Austin and cause the pimp to be busted. Ain't nobody talking. Y'all ain't talking. Cause the pimp to be busted. And, and listen, and deal with her in such a way that she humble herself and say, Father, I repent for allowing me to let my life get to this point. I know better. Both of my parents raised me in church. I was raised for a long season in the kingdom. I know better. Ain't nobody talking. And I believe if enough of us pray and agree, deliverance will come to our children. Anybody going to agree with me? So again, and I'm not out of word, I'm just out of time. We're going to have a moment right now. Uh, uh, Denise, please. And pray for all of our children that are bound by habits, drugs, lifestyles that's not biblical, and that's everything from fornication to homosexuality to drugs to drinking. Ain't nobody talking. I wish I had somebody that would agree. You do know that that's not God, right? I, I pray you do know that sex outside marriage is still not God, right? I do, uh, that the Bible still teaches that, again, homosexuality is still sin, right? Okay, okay, I wish, I hope, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. That fornication, adultery, homosexuality, are y'all listening to me? The drugs and drinking defiling our temple is not of God. But let's pray. I'm not finished. I finish it. Are you going to come back and hear the rest of it? Amen. Give God a hand, amen. Give God a hand for the word, not pastor, but for his word. <laughs> Father, you know, when news came to me this week concerning that precious one 
who grew up in this church. And when I heard the place that they're in, in South Austin, no daddy would want their baby girl in that situation. And we know the father and the mother, and we know that the father has reached out and tried to do what he could do for this child. Father, she needs a supernatural intervention of God. She needs the supernatural intervention of God. But not only her, God, we got other grown children. They may not be in the state that she's in, but they're not living a life that honors you. So we're praying, God, for the deliverance, salvation, <coughs> and rededication of all of our children, our grandchildren. Some are in professions that's not of you. Some, are, some of them are hustling, it's not of you. Some of them are living out of wedlock, it's not of you. Some are having that same-sex lifestyle, it's not of you. And Father, we just believe that if we touch and agree, as we read in this scripture, that today can be the day where Satan has, <coughs> has his last run at their life. That he has to let them go because, Father, we are praying for them. So, Father, for every person, heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking around. If you're saying this morning, and we're not going to call you up, this is between you and God, and I don't need no one looking around, and BJ, no camera shots on the, on, the, uh, ch on the church on this. No camera shots on the church on this. I don't want them on the screen on this. But if you're here and you say, Pastor Moore, I got a child that needs deliverance, salvation, a rededication. They're in a situation that they need to come out of. You're not on camera. Every head by every eye closed. Just as an acknowledgement before God, not the pastor, but before God. Would you just raise your hand and say, I got that? If you're strained in your relationship with your child, just raise your hand. Just raise, I just want God to see it. Come on, you got to be honest, beloved. Don't play church. Don't play church. Don't play church. Don't be religious. Don't be religious. Thank you. You can put those hands down now. Father, I had them to raise their hand because like the woman with the issue of blood, who came in behind the press and got what she needed, you can meet them right where they're at. So whether it's a child, a grandchild, or a great-grandchild, we're praying now for their children's and child's deliverance. Your word says that the seed of the righteous shall be delivered, and that if any two of us would touch and agree Concerning anything that we shall ask, it shall be done by our Father which is in heaven. So, Father, we touch and agree for the deliverance of our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. You said whatever we bound on earth is bound in heaven. So we bind unclean spirits. Hold on, just bear with me. Stay right there. Stay right there, Denise. We bind, Father God. We take authority right now. In the name of Jesus. And even as we pray, your word says for us not to be deceived because people who practice these things will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So, Father, we're coming against the fornication, the adultery. We, we, we come against fornicators, adulterers, adulterers, the effeminate, abusers of themselves with mankind. Thieves, covetous, drunkenness, rivalous, extortionists. Your word says, and such were some of us. So, Father, if you clean us up, you can clean them up. And that's our prayer, Lord. We're not trying to make them like us, but we just want them to know the God <laughs> that we know. And to know him in a real way and in a personal way, Lord. We don't want our children to go to hell. We don't want our grandchildren to go to hell. And we don't want them to be full of hell while they're hell near it. So, Father, we're believing for deliverance, for salvation, 
for a return to the God of their fathers and forefathers. And we thank you for it. <coughs> Excuse me. We thank you for it by faith. Now, while our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. The Bible teaches that when you hear his voice, the heart, not your heart. And today is the day of salvation. So just before we're dismissing, we go home, whether online or in person. If you're not saved and you want to get your relationship right with God, you say, Pastor Moore, I know my mother, my parents have been praying for me. If you're an adult, I know people have been praying for me. But today, I want to get my life right with God. I need to come back home to Jesus for real. I'm provoked, Pastor Moore, to get it right with God. We're not going to ask you where you've been and what you've done. The altar is going to be your heart. But if you're honest, <coughs> excuse me, and sincere, he'll meet you right where you're at. So if you say, Pastor Moore, that's me. Would you pray with me? I want to get my relationship right with God. Whether online, you can raise your hand there online. Those of you here in the sanctuary, is there anyone say, Pastor Moore, pray with me. Um, I need to get my relationship right with God. You can raise your hand right where you at. Is there anyone? You can raise your hand. I see you. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? I see you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. Anyone else? Perhaps you're a backslider. And you know God, but you know you're not where you ought to be in God. And listen to me, beloved. I'm not doing this to... Uh, how would you say to try to make us look spiritual listen we're living in some dangerous times uncertain times our spiritual mother and pastor pastor Valerie says we're living in an uneven season where things are crazy on all sides listen beloved you need to get it right with God you need to get it right with God so if you're here and you haven't raised your hand listen we're not going to embarrass you we're not going to call you forth and ask you to confess your sins we're going to pray with you that can't that that won't hurt nothing will it we're going to pray with you to get your life right with God if that's you and you haven't raised your hand say pastor Moore I've given it some more thought and I know I need to quit playing fooling myself and playing games I need to get it right with God you can raise your hand is there anyone else pastor Moore I need to get my relationship right with God you can raise your hand and raise it so that the devil know you mean business is there anyone else pastor Moore you can raise your, you can raise your hand at this time Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. If you're here and you're not a member of church and God has placed upon your heart to become a member of the kingdom, if you're interested in church membership and those of you online, you can go to our website. We have an e-membership and go to our website and it will instruct you, excuse me, <coughs> and inform you how that you can become a member. Our drummer, Brother Swift, his mother, Narissa, there in Houston, is a member of our church, an online member. We got Brother Stanley in Dallas, an online member. If you're not a member of any church, you go to our website, and we, you can find out how you can become an e-member. But if there anyone in person, you're here and you say, Pastor Moore, I would like to become a member of the kingdom. You can raise your hand. Is there anyone? You can raise your hand. Thank you, my sister. Is there anyone else, Pastor Moore? I'm interested in church membership. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, listen, we're not just trying to pull you from your church. If you're a member of a church, fine. But listen, everybody needs, all sheep needs a sheepfold and a shepherd. This is not a perfect church, but we love Jesus, and we try to get other people to love Jesus for real. If you're looking for a church, again, where it's the people are not perfect, but we are passionately pursuing him to become more like him. And you need to be a member. You need to be somewhere. And you say, Pastor Moore, that's me. I want to, I'm interested in church membership. If you haven't raised your hand, you can at this time. You can at this time. Okay, let me go back to my first two because my first two are the most important. Because you can join a church and that don't mean you're going to heaven. You got to be right with God. You got to be right in your salvation and rededication. You got to be right for real. And just maybe one or two, maybe three of you, you've given it another thought. You say, Pastor Moore, I'm glad you came back to this invitation because 
Man, I'm going to quit playing games. I'm going to get it right with God today. I ain't going to put it off. I ain't going to make no excuses. I'm going to get it right today. Is there someone here present? Say, that's me, Pastor Moore. I want to get it right today. You can raise your hand. Is there anyone? Anyone else? I want to get my life right with God today. Anyone else? You can raise your hand at this time. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Let me say this. The person that raised their hands, uh, persons that raised their hand that's entering church membership, I'm ask Elder Verna Dervis that oversees our new membership class to come up front and uh, meet you after service. So after we dismiss the congregation, you come forward, and uh, Elder Verna will be standing up here, and we'll uh, begin to begin that process with you. Now, Kingdom family and those of you online, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And Elder Sanithia, those guys that usually close, I'm going to go in and just close out because we're beyond the hour. But, but pray this prayer with me, those of you that raise your hand, to get your life right with God. Just be sincere and honest. It don't have to be long. You just have to be sincere and honest. And Kingdom family, in person and online, let's agree with them. Pray with our brothers and sisters as they endeavor to get their lives right with God. If that's your prayer and you're sincere, even if you didn't raise your hand online, if you didn't raise your hand in person, if you didn't raise your hand, if you pray it, God will meet you right where you're at. Let's pray this prayer. Say, dear God in heaven, I come to you according to your word. And your word says, if I come to you, you won't turn me away. So I come to you now. And I confess, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done evil in thy sight. But you say, <coughs> if I confess my sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I confess my sins. I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He died and he rose again for me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Help me to live a life that represents you and pleases the Father. Father God, thank you for receiving me and restoring all things. In Jesus' name, give God a hand. Praise everybody. <clears throat> Give God a hand. Praise everybody. Can I get that water, babe? Babe, give me that water, please. Come on. Did you receive something from the word? Amen. All is well. Just got to scratch your throat. Amen. Just got to scratch your throat. All right. We're going to encourage you in your giving today. Um, if you're giving in person, for those of you that's giving in person to, on the west side of our building in that, um, in the, um, and then the hallway is our giving station. You can give your tithes or offerings or whatever the Lord lays on your heart in that giving station. That's the, the little uh, container there on the wall. For those of you online, you can give by way of mail-in, online or texting. And our prayer is that as you honor the Lord with your tithes and offerings or your generous gift, that the Lord will bless you back in the areas that you need it most. Amen, kingdom family. Any givers in the house? Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Elder, I'm going to just go on and close this out, if you will. I'm going to just go on and close this out. I'm going to just go on and close out. I kept you a little longer than I normally do. Did you receive anything? Is it, is it all right if I come back later and share, this, share the rest of this with you? All right. All right. Well, you know I'm going to do it anyway, right? <laughs> okay. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, again, we thank you for our time together. Be with us all this week. Keep our children and grandchildren safe over the summer. And we thank you for doing so. And we cover ourselves by saying, He that dwelleth in the... I will say of the Lord, My God and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee. Come on, say it.
a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward because thou hast made the Lord Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee. The young lion and the dragon, because he has set his love upon me. Give God a hand praise for our covering. Now may the Lord bless thee, keep thee, make his face to shine upon thee, lift up his countenance upon thee, giving you his rest, his peace, and his security. As you've been blessed coming in, may you be blessed going out. May the Lord your God make you the head, not the tail, above only and not beneath. Remember that each one reach one for him before he comes. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. One more hand praise to the Lord. We are dismissed. God bless you. Love, peace, and blessings. Join us for Bible Study 75, beloved.